Hi, and welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 18th of February, 2018. My name is Don Bolt. I'm the pastor at the church, and for the next 10 minutes, I'd like to share some of the highlights of this morning's message. Uh, we're uh, heading towards, uh, you know, that time when we uh, remember and celebrate to the death and resurrection of our Savior, and so we're turning our focus, uh, you know, really particularly to the person of Jesus Christ. And so this morning, we're, we're looking at Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, and that's contained in uh, John chapter 14, and that's where we're going to go right away. But but why do we have these four books in the New Testament that tell us the story of Jesus? You know, why do we hang on every word? Why do we seek to know him and to know about him so much? And uh, we're going to try to answer some of that as we go along. So John 14, 1 through 14, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. Look at how intimately Jesus is speaking to his disciples as he is preparing to depart. And uh, he's speaking to them and saying, look, I'm, I'm going to go prepare a place that you can live with me forever. Uh, and uh, what a promise. I mean, to have a place anywhere, to have a place where you're welcome, to have somebody say, look, come, uh, I'm looking forward to you coming. Uh, I'll, I'll come and get you. I've prepared a place for you. Wow. And this is Jesus, the Son of God. This is, uh, you know, he's talking very Trinitarian terms as we move on here. He starts talking about himself as the fa and the Father as being one. But uh, let's keep going. Um, he says that, uh, okay, verse 4, And you know the way where I'm going. And Thomas, you know, the one with the questions, I love it because he asked the question we're all asking. He said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him this, this famous statement, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, is this something strange and new that Jesus was introducing, or was he speaking to them about something that they really knew about? And what it is, you have to understand that to the Jewish mind, Torah, you know, the, the, the law, the, the first five books of the Bible, taught them the way of the Lord, all right, and, and so that they could walk in it, uh, taught them the truth of God, and uh, that uh, in addition to that, it also helped them to understand what life is and to understand the nature of it, that life is an opportunity to walk in the ways of the Lord, and actually, because you know the truth, to be able to, in that life uh, that you have to actually accomplish something that is actually worked in you and through you by God himself. All right, so, so let's, let's keep moving here, all right? And so he says to him, uh, Lord, show Show us the Father, uh, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? Uh, and so we're seeing this. Wait a minute. The one who is saying all this to you is the one whom the Father sent. You know, and this is very Trinitarian here. This is this idea of, of God the Father, God the Son, you know, working together in this whole thing. And that, that what you're experiencing is uh, you're experiencing because of what the Father has purposed to me and what the Father is doing through me. That's what you're seeing, Philip. And so uh, he said, I have, you know, have I been with you so long you don't know me yet, okay? And do you believe this? He asks them this question and then doesn't really wait for the answer. He goes on to say, the words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own initiative. Initiative, but the Father abiding in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe me because of the works themselves. And he's saying, look at what you have seen. And you may have grown accustomed to seeing the miracles and to seeing uh, the things that, that, that are being worked through me. But he tells him that, look, you know, you didn't believe that I am who I say to you that I am. And that this one who's speaking to you is, is telling you that I am preparing a place for you for eternity with uh, the, the Father. And so he says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Okay, And there's, there's more in that context, but let's move on. See, because Torah was the way, the truth, and the life, and, and the way to the Father, okay? And, and, and in the Old Testament, okay, uh, the Tanakh, all right, that what's, what it is is that you have to understand, there was no way to know Yahweh, there was no way to know the Lord, there was no way to know God, except uh, to receive this revelation from him of truth. We cannot arrive at truth uh, without revelation from God, because basically all it comes down to, apart from God, is just a list of things we like and don't like, and that becomes our truth. You know, there's people, that's how they talk in those terms, but we can know more than that. We can know the truth, okay? Okay? And uh, so Jesus say, I am the living fulfillment. I am the living word. I am the living fulfillment of, of, of Torah here. And without this revelation from God, there would be 
uh, three essential unanswered questions. You know, what is the way, what is the truth, and what is life? All right, but Jesus, the living word, has, according to Hebrews 10, 20, inaugurated a new and living way into the presence of the Lord. And that uh, it's through his flesh, through this, this veil of his flesh, uh, that is, he's offered up and his blood is shed and becomes this perfect sacrifice that opens up this everlasting way into the presence of God for those who would uh, embrace faith in him. And so... Um, the uh, you know, just give you some scriptures real quick here. Genesis eighteen nineteen tells us that, uh, that that Abraham was considered faithful because he would keep the way of the Lord. Uh, Exodus thirty two eight uh, talks about the people having turned away from the way of the Lord. And uh, anyways, Deuteronomy five uh, thirty two and thirty three uh, speaks of uh, that you should walk in all the way which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may be well with you, and that you may live long, prolong your days in the land which you will possess. And this idea that it was. The, the, the way, the truth, okay, in Psalm 117.2, the truth of the Lord is everlasting, you know, thy word is truth, okay, uh, John 3.21, he who practices the truth comes to the light because it shows that his deeds have been wrought or worked in God, all right, and this is one of the promises, and this is what it means to have this truth, uh, the potential that I can actually do something that was God's intention, uh, John 8.31 and 32, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. All right, I'm just going to leave that because we've got to keep moving here. Okay, John 16, 13. The spirit of truth comes. When he comes, he will guide you into all the truth. And so this this idea, you know, as Jesus, the Messiah, was the fulfillment of, of Torah, now in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is now going to be this fulfillment, this fulfilling step uh, into this new life that we can live here and now. And, and so John, John 17, 17, Jesus says, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And in John 18, 37, I have come into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. The life, okay? Psalm 34, uh, it's 11 through 16. I'm just going to read part of it here. Who is the man who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good and seek peace and pursue it. And uh, the and that in Jesus, and according to John chapter 1, verse 4, in him was life. And so... The result uh, that we're looking at here is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life offers this opportunity uh, to, to, to live this, this life, to live, to walk in the way, to know the truth, and to, to live by it, and to accomplish things that God intended to accomplish and to have them accomplished through you. And then, uh, in the end, uh, to have a place prepared for you that you might spend eternity uh, in fellowship with him in the presence of the Father. And so at the, at the very end, John 14, 15 through 18 just says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give give you another helper that he may be with you forever this is the holy spirit and uh, that is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him but you know him because he abides with you and he will be in you i will not leave you as orphans i will come to you what an amazing promise with that i'm going to say god bless you we'll see you next time on the 10 minute video summary